Right, here we are continuing with the 2011 PAT. This, uh, this is the written answers in the physics section. So not including the long one, but the sort of mid-length ones. Question 22. A catapult consists of a massless cup attached to a massless spring of length L and spring constant K. If a ball of mass M is loaded into the cup, catapult is pulled back to extend the spring to a total length X. What velocity does the ball reach when launched horizontally? Right, OK, so this is going to be that the kinetic energy of the ball is going to be equal to the elastic potential energy of the spring. So we've got the a half mv squared is equal to a half kx squared. So we can get rid of the halves. What we're trying to work out, we're trying to work out v. Uh, so cancel those. They haven't given. Oh, yeah, we're just doing an actual solve for that. Um, actually, x. So what's our x? Well, oh, total length x, right? OK, so this is in inverted commas. So that x is not the same as that x. That's what they may be trying to catch people out on. That's total length. So the extension is x minus l. So v is going to be the square root of k over m times x minus l all squared all right we could put that on the outside then so we can say that v is equal to x minus l that's going to be an l times the square root of k over m okay so yeah the tricky only thing there is to take care with what that x actually means total length catapult is then used to launch the ball vertically if the spring is extended to the same length same total length of x before release to what velocity does the catapult now accelerate the ball right so now some of the epe is going to be going to gravitational potential energy because it's got to go upwards rather than going horizontally so we've got our so our half k x minus l squared that's our epe that's now going to a half mv squared plus mg and it's going to be going back the extension. So X plus L. That's how much GPE you're going to have to put in. Right. So we've just got to rearrange all of this in order to for V squared. So let's multiply everything by two over M then. Seems like an idea. So K over M X minus L squared is V squared plus uh, yeah, 2 over m, so 2gx minus l. So that means that we're going to get that v is the square root of k over m x minus l squared minus 2gx minus l. Okay, bit of a mess, but still, that's all right. To what height above its position at launch? Will the ball reach if launched vertically? Right, position at launch. So does that mean is pulling down the catapult part of the launch or not? I'd say it's probably when it's let go, isn't it? So if you put the so the catapult's going upwards, if you put the ball in the catapult, then pull it down, so it's down here, then let it go so it fires upwards. This must be the launch. That must be position at launch, mustn't it? Not here. You wouldn't consider that part. But it is sort of part of the launch. You put it in there and then the launch process. But I, I'm going to say that this is the launch position. So uh, let's maybe make a note of that. So launch position equals lowest point, we'll say. So at least they know what we're trying to calculate here when we do the work. Um, so we'll be saying what is what height above its position at launch will the ball reach if launched vertically? So we're going to have that um, mgh is going to be a half m and then multiplied by all of this stuff because this is our um, this is our velocity. So we need to multiply that by so we're just doing conservation of energy. L squared minus 2GX minus L. OK. So we've got all of that. 
Um, the M's cancel. We've got, um, well, we can put these twos all the way through. So get rid of that and put a two down there. And then we've got uh, G's. So let's get G all the way through. Get rid of those. So we're left with H is equal to K over 2MG x minus l squared minus x minus l so that would be the height above the lowest point um yeah i mean who knows what they mean by position at launch i'm not a big fan of how that question has been worded but we had that in one of the previous sections as well they had another badly worded question in there so there's this is uh, this must be a different person or set of people who have set this paper who created it compared to normal because this is not i don't know it just seems completely different paper to previous years i'd imagine people if they'd gone into 2011 having practiced the previous uh, six years or, or five years of papers whatever it is five years and that, that they wouldn't have been that thrilled seeing this so anyway carrying on question 23 an electron initially at rest is accelerated by potential v in a vacuum so it's accelerated through V, travels horizontally in a region of space where there's an electric field E, a magnetic field B, a line. So the upwards force is EE -E, and the downwards force is EVB. Different Vs. This is a capital V for voltage and that is a small V for velocity. Right, okay, so they've given us E and B. These are the same. So we can say E, E is equal to E, V, B. So cancel those. So the velocity is going to be equal to E over B, which is 10 to the 5, 6, 7, 8 meters per second. And that has got to be, well, half MV squared, because that's what we're getting the energy from, has got to be equal to E times V. What are we even trying to work out? We're trying to work out V. Right, so we need to, well, we just stick all that in and work out what V is. So V is equal to uh, M, which is 10 to the minus 30, times V squared, which is 10 to the 16, divided by 2 times 3 point, uh, not 3.2, I haven't got there yet, it's E, 1.6, I'm already multiplying it by 2 times 10 to the minus 19. So that is equal to, let's put a, let's keep a 10 at the top because we can put that over 3.2. So if we've kept a 10, we've got times 10 to the four there, volts. Right, so it's useful for this. So let, how many 3.2s go into 10? We've got three of them gives us 9.6 and then that leaves us with 0.4 over 3.2, which is an eighth. So you've got three and an eighth, so 3.125 times 10 to the four. I think they want this to, I can't remember what they said now, two or three significant figures, whatever it is at the front of the, let's just say 3.1, I think it was uh, two significant figures for this part of the uh, test, but you can flick back to the start of the paper. I'm just not going to do it now because I'm already on page 15 or whatever it is. Uh, so, yeah, that was fine. Uh, another certainly uh, useful thing, you know, thinking of these the ways of dealing with fractions. Um, you, know, you really want to get handy with your simple arithmetic like that. Right, where are we now? Radioactive source emits a parallel beam of alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Place 10 centimetres from a detector, which is sensitive to all forms of radiation, receives 100 counts per second. Um, is this detector going to be, is that, I'm assuming that's in air, is it? Or is it, it doesn't say where the detector is or where the source is. Is that in a vacuum tube or is it going through air? Well, we don't know. Because once again, they haven't said. Right. When a sheet of aluminium of thickness one centimetre is placed in front of the detector, the radiation level is seen to fall to 50. When the source is taken away completely, the radiation, right, okay, so that's telling us that the background is equal to 10. That's something that we can say. I'm hoping there's going to be more information 
that's 10. When the source is placed one centimetre from the detector, the radiation levels are seen to increase. Right, so it is in air then. They could have said that in the question. Again, badly worded. So it's gone up there. So that must mean that alpha is equal to 300 then, which means this drop here is going to be because of beta. So beta must be 50. So gamma must be 40. What proportion are those? So we've got 300 to 50 to 40. So we've got 30 to 5 to 4. Um, yeah, another. I mean, it's quite a nice question on the face of it, but it's uh, it's it's another failure of communication by whoever wrote it. Question 25. A packing company supplies storage boxes in three different sizes, small, medium, large. All three types of box have got the same ratio of width, length and height. Right. So they're oh, width to length and height to length. Right. OK. Yeah. But that's just saying they're all in proportion to each other. So that's fine. Eight small boxes fit neatly inside one medium box. Right, let's give a bit of space. So, uh, so that means that the volume of eight volumes of small is, was it a volume of one medium? Right, so V equals volume. That's done that one. The length of the small box is the same as the height of the medium box. So length small equals height medium. L equals length. H equals height, just so I know what all these mean. Base area, width times length. We have a large box, and it says width times length, but all the areas are going to be the same. It doesn't matter which one we picked because they're all in proportion. So the area of a large box is nine times smaller than the area of a small box. Now they must mean larger because it's a large box. So let's assume they mean larger. There we go, another wording mistake nine times larger so area of large is nine area of small so a equals area the lengths of all the boxes so length small plus length medium plus length large is 2.4 meters okay the width of a medium box is twice the height of a small box so width of a medium twice the height of a small so we've now got W equals width. OK, what are the lengths of the three different boxes? OK, so we've got here. So this is telling us that the uh, so the length of a um, small because this is volume. These are proportional to length cubed. So the length of a small one must be half the length of the of the medium one. OK, and then we've got that the what else have we got here? So we could go with five. What is five telling us? The media width of a medium box is twice the height of a small box. Right, so that's not really helping us very much. Right. So we must be going with three then. So the nine areas of a small is equal to the area of a length. Right, OK, so that means then that we're going to have the So that's square in it. So three times the length of a small is equal to the length of a large. So because that's proportional to L squared and that's proportional to L cubed. Right, so that's fine. So we've got. 1 to 2 to 3 is our ratio of lengths. So that means we must have, if they've got to add up to 2.4 metres, we can split them into six bits. So we can say that for length, if we're going small, medium, large, we've got 0 0.4, um, 0 point, um, is that right? Yeah, 0 0.4, that's right, yeah, 0 0.8, and then 1.2 meters so that's what we've got on those and um, what do we now know with the others so the length of a small is the height of a medium so that's 0 0.4 the width of a medium is two heights of a small but anyway these are all in proportion so if we know that's half that's got to be half and that's got to be half the width of a medium where are we width of a medium that's this one is a height of two small so all right so that's the same 
as the heights. What are we trying to work out? Width to height, so that's one to one. Uh, width to height is one to one, and width to length is one to two. Right, that was, yeah, that was fairly straightforward, wasn't it, actually? Once you unpick those, the key thing is just seeing these ones, proportional to LQ, proportional to L squared, whack them all in. You don't actually have to do any simultaneous equations in this one, which is unusual for that type of question. So I'll give this one a thumbs up as a question. I like that one, number 25. Right, where are we now? Oh, we're coming on to the long question. So I'll stop that one here and I'll do the long question in the next video.